As of the end of 2022, I have ridden 1,230 different roller coasters across the world, 1,064 made of steel, 166 made of wood. In 2022, I rode 72 new roller coasters, and 6 of those cracked my top 100. Other coasters moved up as I got re-rides on them, while others moved down. I am also going to include one coaster I rode just after the calendar change of 2023 because it placed quite high on the list. This will be a two-part video ranking my favorite 100 roller coasters in the world that I've personally ridden. This is why you won't see rides from places like China, South Korea, or Australia as I haven't been there yet. This video will cover spots 100 through 51. A second video will show spots 50 through 1 and should be released tomorrow. This list will combine both wooden steel coasters into one big list. I place rides assuming I'm in my favorite seat and going by how the coaster is running in my most recent visits. I tend to prioritize rides with great airtime, strong pacing, and a beautiful setting. This list is all my personal opinion. I don't expect anyone to have the same list as me. When I compare two rides, it comes down to which one I have more fun on. If you want more in-depth thoughts on many of these rides, I have separate reviews already published for all but five of the coasters here. Also, to avoid being redundant, assume the rides are smooth in this list unless otherwise noted. Starting off the list at number 100 is Surf Coaster Leviathan at Sea Paradise. This Togo sit-down coaster shocked me. I thought it would be a tame jet coaster, but boy was I wrong. Instead, it has a series of drops with good airtime, sudden directional changes inducing laterals, and multiple forceful helixes. It's a long ride too, and this all takes place above the water. Number 99, New Texas Giant at Six Flags Over Texas. The original RMC has a very long layout. The first half has some wonderful elements. I love the powerful first drop. Then you have strong ejector airtime on the step up into the first overbank and the speed hill. Some do find the overbanks a bit repetitive, but they each feel different to me. The second in particular stands out for the crazy whip. The second half does lose a lot of steam though. There are still plenty of hills, but they aren't nearly as violent as the rides higher up on this list. You do have the superior Gerslauer trains and restraints though to the usual RMC ones. Number 98, Behemoth at Canada's Wonderland. This B&M Hyper is one of the best for airtime. The first half is a great first drop and several camelbacks offering very sustained floater airtime. Then the finale has some fun helixes and a few extra spots of airtime too. I think the airtime is best towards the back, but some of the valleys can get a bit rattly back there. Number 97, Flug der Damon at Haida Park. This is my favorite B&M wing coaster. The layout is very well rounded. The wing over drop has hang time before blasting you with positive G's in the valley. The speed hill gives sustained floater airtime. The Ilma is a nice mix of positives going up and airtime going down. Then the final three inversions, including the one of a kind demonic knot, offer good laterals and whip up front and superb hang time in the back. Add in great use of terrain and it's not hard to see why this is the king of the genre for me. Number 96, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket at Universal Studios Florida. This Mauer X-Car coaster is an underrated one. The coaster pulls some great forces. You have several forceful turns and no shortage of airtime. There are a ton of mid-course brake runs, but you get good airtime entering and exiting them so I don't mind one bit. Then there's also an awesome non-inverting loop combining negative and lateral G's. Add in some sweet onboard audio, and this ride is a pure joy. Now this ride can have a shuffle, but it's not enough to cause me pain with those lap bar restraints. Number 95, Space Mountain at Magic Kingdom. This is a classic indoor coaster. It's very dark, but you have some stars and just enough light to realize just how tight this coaster's clearances are. The four main drops give some really good airtime in the back car, and the tight helixes towards the end have some force as well. This ride is a tad jerky at points, but the trains are like riding on couches. Number 94, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at Epcot. This is an immersive ride start to finish. After a series of pre-shows, 
you board a prototype spinning coaster ride system from Vacoma. These ones don't spin freely. Rather, they rotate at predetermined points to emphasize a certain rider story element. This ride is pure chaos and fun. I think it's Disney's best paced coaster. You have a fun launch at the start, followed by a long layout with some airtime pops and some fairly forceful turns. Then you also have the environment of Space Mountain with some giant video screens to progress the story. Lastly, you have onboard audio that's just plain pure fun. Number 93, Phoenix of Farrop Summerland. This Facoma sit-down looper has a nice blend of airtime and inversions. You have a dozen or so negative G moments. It's mostly floater pops, but the first drop does offer stronger, more sustained airtime in the back car. But the highlights are the three inversions. The stall loop has incredible hang time. Then the barrel roll and corkscrew offered incredible whip and laterals as the train hauls through them. The ride is light in the positive G's, but it's otherwise quite good all around. Number 92, Flying Aces of Ferrari World. This ride sort of looks like Skyrush, but it rides very differently. The trains feature more comfortable restraints, and while the first drop has strong ejector airtime, it's a more fluid moment. The coaster has a few other airtime moments too, but this ride's biggest strength are the laterals. The non-inverting loop and S-bends all try and eject you sideways. And then you have a hang time filled inversion at the end for good measure. Number 91, Pyrenees at Parque Espana. This B&M invert feels like a Batman the Ride clone scaled way up. You have the size of the larger inverts with the tenacity of the original layout. This is a wonderful combination. The inversions are as great as you'd expect. But I also want to highlight the super tight helix that pierces through the loop. That will make your legs tingle. Number 90, Katoon at Mirabilandia. This ride does many of the same things as Pyrenees. It's large, forceful, and snappy. But there are two things this one does better. First, the setting is more isolated, resulting in awesome night rides. Second, the drop is profiled in such a way that it gives some floater air time to juxtapose all those positive G's later in the ride. Number 89, Wild Train at Fantasiana. This pack's creation is the stats of a family coaster, but airtime rivaling most RMCs. The hills are profiled super sharply, so they all try and launch you into the ionosphere. Some may find the airtime too abrupt or jarring, but I love the absurdity of it especially when you see the terrifying head choppers this ride is paired with. Number 88, Rorosaurus at Storyland. This Gravity Group wood coaster is just four stories tall, but it has some aggressive airtime. You are thrown out of your seat at least a dozen times, and the airtime gets stronger as it goes. The finale is surprisingly good. It reminds me of Steel Vengeance's finale, as you have four tiny and intense hills that abruptly buck you upwards. I still cannot believe this rise at a children's park. Number 87, Jersey Devil Coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure. This raptor is a tale of two halves. The first half is top notch. The first drop is incredible ejector airtime in the back. You also have good airtime on the giant camelback and turnaround. Then the three inversions deliver too. The dive loop is excellent laterals. Then the stall and zero-g roll will leave you dangling against the restraint. The second half dials it back though. You'll still get airtime, but it's more like graceful floater. And while I don't find the over-the-shoulder restraints on the Raptors uncomfortable, I do prefer the more freeing usual lap bars. Number 86, Rouge Banana Tivoli Gardens. This scenic railway is one of the few rides that still runs with a brakeman or brake woman. You have no seatbelts and just a lap bar that can be really loose. So there are several drops in this ride that'll fling you a foot into the air. That's especially true if the employee is light on the braking. Some are more conservative than others, but you can get some shocking ejector airtime with the right one. But this coaster is even more to offer beyond the negative G's. The turns are unbanked, and because there's no seat divider, you can slide side to side. Then I love this ride's location as it takes place in and around a themed mountain. Number 85. Pirat in a Jersey Summerland. Now I get why people like Intamin Megalites after riding this one. This coaster runs so much better than Tobu Zoo's Kawasemi because it has a faster lift hill, fuller trains, 
and it's constantly cycling. The ride still needs some time to warm up, but it was everything I could want by the afternoon. The first drop on large S hill only have moderate floater airtime, but the other hills have strong ejector airtime rivaling the company's larger hyper coasters. Those middle S hills in particular are super intense. Then the low turns throw in positive G's for variety. Number 84, Wild Mouse XXL. This is your standard Wild Mouse jacked up with steroids. I never thought a Wild Mouse could be this crazy. The ride used to be your standard mock Wild Mouse, but it was transformed in 2012 into the XXL version. The ride's height was doubled, and two large and zippy drops were added at the start. This leads to you taking the old layout with way more speed, and there are zero brakes, so you get some of the most violent laterals of any coaster, and the hills all have aggressive airtime with the added speed. I was getting powerful ejector airtime on several of them, and to top it all off, you have a funhouse style queue line. I still cannot believe there's a traveling coaster this good. Number 83, Monster at Adventureland. This Gerslauer Infinity Coaster has such a neat layout. You start with a beyond vertical drop with thigh crushing ejector airtime. Then you have a variety of elements that will get you out of your seat. Some deliver airtime. Some deliver lateral strong enough to chuck you sideways. Then you have some great hang time moments on the inversions and super slow turns. Usually, I dislike when coasters slow down like this, but I have no issue with how Monster does it because it always finds a way to get you out of your seat. Number 82, Cannibal Lagoon. I cannot believe this Utah park designed and built this ride in-house. It is a big and unique hyper coaster. That 20 story tall, 116 degree beyond vertical plunge is pure insanity. The drop seemingly lasts forever, starting off with ejector airtime before morphing into floater for the rest of the descent. Then the ride packs in for great inversions too. The Illman is good positives, the dive loop is a shocking pop of ejector airtime going into it, and the lagoon roll is some truly crazy hang time because you have just the lap bar, and there is a bit of theming around the ride too. Number 81, Alpina Blitz at Negla Land. This is Mach's take on the Megalite. The ride is very similar in terms of forces with one key difference. This one starts off with an incredible drop with some strong ejector airtime. It's a fitting start for the negative G's that follow. Number 80, Swamp Fox at Family Kingdom. Now I admittedly have no clue where to fairly rank this ride. My 2020 rides had Swamp Fox as a top 10 wood coaster for me. The ride has some downright aggressive ejector airtime despite having just buzz bars. But in 2022, two things were working against this ride. One, I rode an opening day when it was a lot cooler. Two, the ride was running considerably rougher. Shortly after my visit, the coaster actually closed for extensive retracking, and afterwards locals said it was riding to how I experienced it in 2020. Further complicating things is that this coaster received extensive damage from Hurricane Ian, and it's getting some more track work. Hopefully that means it should run peak form in 2023 and beyond. I still enjoyed this coaster in 2022, but the airtime was not quite at the elite level anymore. It was still pretty darn good and abrupt though. Number 79, Renegade at Valley Fair. This is one of the best GCI layouts. I like how it's tucked in a backstage area, so night rides are really dark in this one. The first half has these speed hills with sustained floater. The large turnarounds have the strong jolts of airtime you'd expect from a GCI. Then the second half throws in some more quick pops of airtime. Now there are two downsides with this coaster compared to the GCIs ahead of it. One, it has a bit of a shimmy. Two, this one has retractable seatbelts that can restrict your airtime a bit. Number 78, Mindbender at Galaxy Land. This Schwarzkopf recently closed, and it's a real shame because it was a super intense coaster. It had a series of steep and devilishly twisted plunges, and three of the most powerful inversions of any coaster. Those three loops are automatic grayouts for me. The finale also threw in a pop of airtime or two, plus a disorienting helix. And I still cannot believe this ride was crammed indoors. Number 77, Chimera at La Feria de Chapultepec. This is an even more intense version of Mindbender. Part of that was Mexico City's elevation making me dizzy. Part of that was the lack of braking. 
this led to enhanced positive Gs in the inversions and some unintended airtime and lateral moments later in the layout. I was skeptical this ride would ever run again after the accident, but I'm glad Indiana Beach saved the Schwarzkopf and it should finally reopen in 2023. Number 76, Storm Runner at Hershey Park. This is America's most complete intimate accelerator coaster. The hydraulic launch is intense. It yanks you down the launch track in an instant. Then I love this ride's diverse layout. The top has fantastic ejector airtime going up and down. Then you have three inversions. There's a mildly forceful Cobra loop, and more notably, the flying snake dive. You get airtime going up, then you have a hang time filled barrel roll, and it ends with a disorienting twisting dive loop. Then you have an extra hump or two on the way of the brakes while keeping all that speed until the end. Number 75, Junker at Powerland. This Gerslauer Infinity Coaster feels like a launched version of Monster. The initial LSM launch has some serious kick to it. Then every single element offers good laterals, while also lifting you out of your seat in some way. Your body is really tossed about thanks to those freeing lap bars. I especially love the ejector airtime on the top hat and the hang time on the three inversions. Number 74, Boardwalk Bullet Akima Boardwalk. How Gravity Group crammed this wood coaster into one acre, I will never know. The first half is incredible. You have some wonderful drops and then a series of smaller hills throwing you from the train. I particularly love the double up after the first drop. The airtime does decrease in strength as the ride progresses, moving towards floater and weaker pops, but the brilliantly layered layout hides what comes next at each point. Number 73, Gold Striker at California's Great America. This is the most intense GCI I have experienced. The recent track work helped this ride immensely. It was running fairly smoothly in 2022 and ripping through the layout. It's fast on its own, and the speed is augmented by the tunnels and supports you whiz past. And you of course have a bevy of airtime pops, not quite as strong as the other top tier GCIs, but when paired with everything else, this is a very complete ride. Number 72, Vodon Timber Coaster at Europa Park. This GCI may be a pinch less intense than Gold Striker, but I prefer it for three reasons. One, it was extremely smooth when I last rode it in 2021. Two, the airtime is stronger. Like Renegade, you have a mix of straight hills with sustained floater airtime, plus sharper hills that really toss you from your seat. Three, this has the best drop of any GCI. It's big and chock full of sustained negative Gs, and it has the same great speed as the prior one. Number 71, Mystic Timbers at King's Island. This is GCI's best ground up coaster. It has wonderful pacing and an incredible location in the woods. By day, you get the sense of speed whizzing past trees. Then you get a nearly pitch black ride at night, and the layout has plenty of airtime hills. Each one pops you from your seat, and despite having an out and back layout, the hills also twist side to side to keep you on your toes. Then you have the shed at the end. It's quirky, but it always puts a smile on my face. Number 70, Wonder Woman Flight of Courage at Six Flags Magic Mountain. I heard this coaster ran faster than Jersey Devil, and people were not lying. This ride has the same great start with some extra force on the camelback and far turnaround, but the second half shocked me in a good way. Unlike Jersey Devil which meekly lifts you from your seat, this one had some really good sustained airtime in the return run. It's the finale I expect from an RMC. Number 69, Medusa's Steel Coaster at Six Flags Mexico. This RMC conversion doesn't pack as much airtime as the other hybrids, but the turnarounds and drop down the hill still deliver good ejector airtime. This coaster's biggest strengths are its pacing and inversions. You rip through the layout. No elements are wasted, and all three inversions offer great hang time. Everyone mentions the barrel roll drop at the start, but that final roll is my favorite. I do need a caution that I haven't experienced Medusa at its peak though. In my first visit, it was running slower due to the VR conversion. Then my second visit, it was running a truncated 5 car Franken train instead of the usual 6 car train. Number 68, Twisted Cyclone at Six Flags Over Georgia. This hybrid conversion is one of the shortest coasters RMC has ever made 
and it certainly feels as such. But the elements it has are very good. The drops and bunny hills launch you skywards. Then you have three floaty inversions, including the unique reverse cobra roll turnaround. But the best part has to be the giant wave turn. It offers some of the strongest and most sustained sideways airtime on the planet. Number 67, Lightning Run in Kentucky Kingdom. The world needs more chance Hyper GTX coasters. This ride feels like an RMC with its powerful ejector airtime and pacing. The coaster rips through the layout, never missing a chance to launch riders skywards. That's best seen in the finale, which has some of the most aggressive ejector pops on any coaster. It doesn't have the same sense of speed as coasters higher on this list, but the airtime is phenomenal. Number 66, Leviathan at Canada's Wonderland. The original B&M Giga Coaster feels an element or two short, but it's still a ton of fun. It starts with an epic first drop. Few drops offer more sustained airtime. Then the turn afterwards hits you with strong Gs. While this ride doesn't have as many hills as their hypers, the hills included have very strong floater airtime. I particularly love the little speed hill mixing good airtime and laterals. Some of the turns towards the end are pretty forgettable, but the good more than makes up for it. Number 65, Time Traveler Silver Dollar City. The prototype mock extreme spinning coaster is an absolute delight, especially if you're in the back car. That vertical drop out of the station is incredible back there. You get sustained ejector airtime while sideways or backwards as you plunge down the hill. The rest of the layout has some disorienting inversions and a few additional airtime pops. Some of the turns are just okay, but the fact you spin throughout keeps the layout fresh. Number 64, Terran at Fantasia Land. This intimate multi-launch coaster grew in me in 2022, but I should add that I experienced this coaster on a 100 degree day. I got some extra airtime pops in places I hadn't previously, but the best moments rode similarly. Both launches are good, and the layout is delightfully convoluted as you twist through Klugheim, and you can't tell where you're going next and have world-class visuals. Then the start of each half has a few twisted hills with some strong airtime and laterals, especially with those open lap bars. I just wish each half didn't fizzle out towards the end. Number 63, Nemesis at Alton Towers. This iconic B&M invert is currently being rebuilt, and it rides unlike any other. The park's height ordinance should have doomed this ride, but instead it became a strength. Rather than going high, this coaster is an unconventional layout working its way down a hill and into trenches resulting in sweet visuals. The elements are taken in a different order than usual, and each is very intense. The spiral is the craziest part, but the four inversions are all snappy and forceful. This coaster is short, but the uniqueness and power make it special. Number 62. Montu at Busch Gardens Tampa. This is the best B&M invert in the United States. All seven inversions are excellent. Both vertical loops and the Illman hit you with good positive Gs. The zero G roll offers a blend of float and whip. Then the Batwing is the best element of all. The snaps are super abrupt, and the positives in the valley try to melt your body. And not to be outdone, there's a nice corkscrew at the end that flings you through it and the ride's lowest points are accompanied by these themed Egyptian trenches. Number 61, El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure. I know I'm known for finding this Intamin prefabricated wood coaster overrated, but I totally get why some have it in their top five. The ride's four best moments have some of the strongest and most sustained ejector airtime you can get anywhere. That includes the wicked first drop, the two subsequent camelbacks, and the rolling thunder hill. I'll try and launch you into orbit. However, I prefer rides that are consistently great start to finish. The turnaround has been quite bumpy in recent years, and the smaller hills just have some weak floater airtime. Then the finale has some fast bends, but I wish the ride continued to focus on negative Gs. Number 60, Colossus at Haida Park. The original Intamin prefab rides like El Toro with an improved finale, at least based on my tastes. I prefer that return run with the bunny hills. They offer nice airtime, and you shoot through that beautiful statue that emits fire. The first half is a pinch less forceful than El Toro, but the ride's about as smooth as a wood coaster can be start to finish, so it's far more rewritable. I just wish that pace killing helix wasn't in there. Number 59, Giant Dipper at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. 
This prior and church wood coaster is nearly 100 years old, but it packs in more thrills than many modern rides. This coaster mixes some shocking airtime with some downright powerful laterals. The turnarounds violently plaster you to the side of the train. Then if you're in the back, many drops will offer some really strong lifter airtime, especially if you're on the smaller side like me and get quite a bit of space with a single position lap bar. The ride has a bit of a shuffle to it, but the ride runs much smoother than you'd expect given its age. Number 58, Ravine Flyer 2 at Waldemere. This Gravity Group wood coaster is running better than ever with all the recent track work. It's super smooth, and the airtime towards the end is a bit more oomph than before. But the first half is still the highlight. It is one of the best parts of any coaster. You have one of my favorite drops out there between the view and powerful airtime. Then the Bunny Hills each have sustained floater airtime. And the setting is incredible. The ride is atop a hill facing Lake Erie, plunges down a ravine, and you also cross a highway. Number 57, Wicked Cyclone at Six Flags, New England. This is what would happen if Twisted Cyclone had an extra lap. And coincidentally, this RMC hybrid is often criticized for slowing way down at the end. That final lap is slow, no denying that. But the elements still work for me. The final 0G roll has spectacular hang time, as do the other two inversions earlier in the ride. And the final hill still lift you out of your seat, but the ride's best parts are front-loaded. You have a powerful drop, a grey-out inducing overbank, and some abrupt airtime, most notably on the outward-banked hill midway through the ride. I just wish the second and fourth turnarounds were a bit wilder. Number 56, Steel Dragon 2000 at Nagashima Spa Land. This is a gigantic giga coaster from Morgan. The first half feels like one of their hyperscaled way up. The big hills have lots of sustained floater airtime. Then the turnaround section has some speedy turns, albeit lacking on the force. Then the return run is a never-ending series of bunny hills with some really strong floater airtime. It reminds me of the bunny hills you'd see in a B&M Hyper, just more in a row. I wish the first half didn't jackhammer in the valleys and that you could pick your row though. Number 55, Superman El Ultimo Escape at Six Flags Mexico. This is Morgan's best ground-up coaster. The pre-lift occurs on a hillside and gives some surprise pops of airtime before you hit the main layout. After a long lift hill, you have a more forceful layout than usual. The first drop has lots of sustained floater, and the turnaround section goes nuts. You have a helix with strong laterals, plus some hills with some aggressive airtime. Then the return run, if untrimmed, has some really nice floater airtime as well. And all these great elements are paired with a spectacular view of the mountains and the city skyline. Number 54, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure at Islands of Adventure. This multi-launch coaster is just pure fun. The ride tells a cohesive story, and the theming is great. It feels like you're zipping through the Forbidden Forest, and the few animatronics included look amazing. Then the coaster itself is great too. It's long, and each of the seven launches has good pull to it. Then the turns have sneaky force as well and the side-to-side -side action is more kick if you're on the motorbike because you're raised upwards. And there are some surprise elements too that enhance the experience, but I don't want to spoil those. Number 53, Goliath at La Ronde. This mini hyper doesn't quite break the 200 foot barrier, but it doesn't need to. It may have the most floater airtime of any B&M. This ride is just one camelback after another. Some may call the layout unoriginal, but I'll take the never-ending series of airtime hills. It is all floater airtime, but each moment is very sustained. This one also has no mid-course, so the pacing is strong start to finish, and the views of Montreal are stunning. Number 52, Goliath at Six Flags Over Georgia. This is one of the most powerful B&M hypers. Every single drop in Bunny Hill on this one seems to give excellent floater airtime, and the far turnaround is downright crazy. It is an extremely intense downwards helix that causes me to gray out every time. This one is also super well paced, and I like how it goes outside the park's main boundary. The one con with this ride is that several valleys in the first half have a bad rattle that does hurt its rewritability. Number 51, Mako at SeaWorld Orlando. Finishing the run in the B&M Hypers is Mako. This one has some of the best floater airtime in the world on the outward leg. It's forceful and extremely sustained, particularly in the first camelback. The return run isn't as airtime focused. Instead, 
you have some highly banked turns above the midway and water. The visuals are nice, and they do sort of throw you sideways, but I would have preferred some extra airtime. That being said, the ride's first half and setting make this ride special. So those are spots 100 through 51 of my top 100 coasters for 2022. Check back tomorrow for the top 50. Let me know your thoughts on this list or any of the rides I mentioned down below. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.